welcome back to my channel it's janet and if you're new here make sure you hit that red subscribe button give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell as well so youtube can notify you when i upload a new video and if you're a returning subscriber then welcome back to my channel all right everyone today is wednesday morning and i'm going to be posting this on friday and today's video is going to be what I eat in a day. So I am back on track. I finished the Keto Chow Challenge and today is my first day back eating two meals a day, all keto, counting our net carbs and everything keto. Back on track, back to basics, all right? So I am going to be sharing with you guys a couple new recipes that I'm going to try this morning. And I will show you guys my first meal and I will be taking supper with me, but I will also show you guys what I'll be having for meal number two. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're interested to see what I eat on keto, then keep on watching. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. We are going to start the morning off by checking my ketones and see where they're at, actually. The last couple days, like I said, I've been doing what I wanted to do, which is um, having one keto chow meal per day. Um, Monday, 0.9, sorry. Monday, I actually went out for lunch with girlfriends and we went to a smokehouse and I ended up having some wings with some deviled eggs. They have the best deviled eggs there at Skinny's is what the restaurant was called. And then I had a keto chow for supper. And then on Tuesday, I had a mixed vegetables, which was zucchini, uh, mushrooms, red peppers, and it was all fried up. And I had that with chicken and some steak. And I had that for lunch. And then supper was my keto chow. So today I am going to do two meals that are both going to be keto and we are going to be back on your regular scheduled programming, I guess you would say. <laughs> oh, I didn't have enough blood for that. Um, 82 is my uh, glucose, so that's awesome. All right, everyone, for lunch today, I am going to have some tuna wraps. So I'm starting with a can of tuna that I have drained. I am just going to put this in the bowl. All right, and then I'm going to put some mayonnaise with it. Everybody makes theirs like a little bit different, I always find, um, like as far as egg salad and tuna salad go, but this is the way I do it all the time. I don't follow a recipe or measure or anything like that. Um, some people prefer more mayo, less mayo, but you guys can make it how you guys prefer. There we go. And then I put a little bit of mustard as well in there, I like to too much. And then I also put a little bit of celery in it. I'm not a big fan of celery, to be honest. Um, I just don't like it, but I do like, I do like a little bit of crunch in my um, tuna salad, so I will put a little bit in it. Some people put um, uh, dill pickles as well too. That's actually pretty good. I don't mind it in as well, but today I'm going to be using a little bit of celery in it. Because like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the celery, but I do like it a bit in my uh, in my salad. And then I will add some salt and pepper and the pink Himalayan salt. And we will just mix that up, you guys, and that is it. All right, that is all mixed up. And now we are what we what we are going to do is we are going to put it in some lettuce wraps. So I got these at Sobeys. Um, I've never seen these before, but these are just the single cut romaine. So I thought that would be nice and easy. It has a pretty long date as well too. Today's March 11th and these are till March 20th. So I thought that was gonna be perfect because then I can reuse them as well too for next week's prep if I wanted to make egg salad. So I'm just gonna take out two. I think that should be good enough. There we go. And I'm just gonna split my tuna salad right down the middle and then I'm just going to put these in, I think. Does it matter which way they go in, I wonder? Yeah, I'm gonna put them this way. There we go. All right, 
So let's just put our tuna salad right in there, and then we will roll them up. You guys can even have this tuna salad just by itself as well too. I've done that and just ate it as is. Um, but today I thought I would just be a little bit different and wrap it in some lettuce. Or you can have it with crackers as well. I'm gonna actually have some crackers on the side, which are keto crackers um, that I got. And they're really, really good. I will show them to you in a minute, but I also, I'm just gonna make kind of like a little snack lunch and have these as kind of my main meal of course but i'm just gonna have a few snacks so i will show you guys in the next clip what i have with these wraps all right i'm just going to start assembling my plate and i will show you guys what i have so those guys those are my um tuna salad wraps and then i just have two two slices of cheese of my favorite cheese that i get from costco you guys have seen that before it's the havarti and I'm going to put on the side some of my favorite dip, the artichoke and Asiago dip. You guys need to go and try this. It's at, at Walmart. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in a little dish here and have it on the side. And then these are my favorite as well. I haven't had these in a long time. These are like mozzarella balls in olive oil. They're very, very good. I find them at Sobeys or Walmart. Find them pretty much at all grocery stores. But these are the macros, you guys. Really, really good macros. And it is zero carbs and 14 grams of fat. Really, really good. And they're so delicious. So I'm gonna put some of those in a little container as well to have on the side. And then these were the crackers that I was telling you guys about. These are the Eve's crackers. I get the ones, the sunflower ones. They're really, really good. And they last a long way. I know they're expensive, but it, they do last a long, long time. So I just, these are pretty big pieces. So I'm gonna break these in half and have them with my cheese. And then same with this one. I'm gonna kind of make a sandwich out of that with my cheese as well too. And then these are, of my favorite pork rinds. These are very expensive. I just found them in Canada. They are the 4505 pork rinds and I found them at Nutters. If you do live in Canada and have a Nutters near you, they might have some, but they're very expensive. This bag was $10 and I'm the only one that eats it. So it has lasted me a long time. Today will probably be the end of it, but these are really, really good. So I do recommend getting some of these as well. It's not a necessity as, uh, like at all, but it just kind of helps. And I do like pork rinds, but these are very, very good. So highly recommend getting those. And that is it, you guys. That is going to be my lunch today. So I will have up on the screen what my total carbs are, the total net carbs, sorry, and the calories for this meal today. And this is going to be meal number one. All right, you guys, so I am taking my supper with me because I do work tonight, but I wanted to make this meal. I pretty much cooked everything that I needed to cook and I'm just gonna assemble it, but I will have the recipe linked down below. It is like a cheesy bacon ranch casserole, I guess is what we'll call it, and I'm using spinach with it. You can alternatively use broccoli or spinach, but I do have spinach and I thought that, that would be a nice change. So. I am going to assemble it all here, very easy, which you guys already know that I like, and then we will throw it in the oven. I halved this recipe just because I will probably be the only one that will be eating this, so I did half it. So I want to show you guys what I did, and let's start and let's mix it all together, all right? So first I will start by the chicken. I did cook this chicken already. I cut it up and then I put a whole bunch of spices with it. I put the garlic in with the chicken. Um, salt and, or sorry, pink Himalayan salt, pepper, and some of my Montreal chicken spice that I like to use with chicken. So there's about a little bit over a pound here, I would say. So we are going to put that in our dish. And I'm just gonna use this dish right now because my glass one is being used. Um, so we will throw that in there. And then also it calls for four slices of bacon which I also pre-cooked and I am going to cut that up and put it in with my chicken. So the original recipe called for eight, so that's why I am using four 
slices. Now you guys can obviously chop this before you put it in your frying pan. Uh, I don't think it really matters. I do it either or. I usually tend to do it afterwards and I always usually cut up my bacon as you guys know. I do need to get a new pair of chicken, or not chicken shears, of kitchen shears. I always am cutting up ugh, like everything in my kitchen because I find it's just easier than bringing out a knife and a cutting board. So I'm gonna put that on my list. Maybe I can find some at Amazon or maybe even like Marshalls or Winners will have one. Uh, Winners is like the TJX or the TJ Maxx in the States. And that's where I work. I actually work there as a little part-time job as well as a mechanic. So that's where I'm going to work today actually is at Winners. So, all right, so that is done. Um, next we are going to, next we will add our spinach. Now I, I buy the frozen spinach is what I do. So I actually put that in the microwave and then I just drained it. I'm just gonna give it a little extra squeeze here in the sink before I add that. Kind of to take out all of that excess water. Perfect, all right, and we will add our spinach. There we go. All right, and next it calls for ranch dressing. So I do have um, it's a little less than a half a cup, probably about a half a cup, never, nevertheless. But um, I do love ranch, so the, the original recipe calls for three quarters of a cup, and I am halving this, but I still did um, a little bit like less than a half a cup, just because I do love ranch, and I want it to be really flavorful as well, too. I don't want it to be dry. So I'll add that. And then I do have one cup. It calls for a half a cup of matzo and a half a cup of cheddar. Go figure, you guys. This time I actually have all mozzarella because I usually do get the cheddar and mozzarella blend, but today I have all mozzarella, so we are going to put that all in. And that is it, you guys. That's it. Like, so easy. I love easy. So we're going to mix this all together, and then we are going to top it with chicken. You're going to want to preheat your oven as well to 375, which I have done. Um, and you can either do this in a bowl or you can do it right in the pan, but I just like to do it right in the pan because it's easy cleanup, right? I'm all about that easy cleanup. And then it just works out to be the one dish that we're making it in. Ooh, this looks good. I'm glad I used the spinach. It's gonna be a nice change. I love spinach, so I think it's gonna be really, really good. All right, that is all mixed together. And we are just going to make sure that that's all even in our pan. There we go. And then we are going to put just some shredded cheese on the top before we throw it in the oven. Finally got around to shredding all my cheese. Do you guys um, shred your cheese or do you buy your cheese? I, over the last like few months, I have been buying it, but I thought I wanted to start shredding mine again. Um, it's only like one carb of a difference, but I find that when you shred it yourself, it just kind of um, bakes and cooks and tastes a little bit better, so. All right, so there you guys go. That is all done. So let's put it in the oven and then we will check on it in a little bit. I believe it said, um 20 to 25 minutes but i think mine will be a little bit longer because i have the recipe um and this is it's quite shallow like it didn't come up quite a bit but and everything is cooked that is in here actually so we will check on it probably in like 10 minutes or so all right you guys this is it right out of the oven oh my gosh that looks absolutely delicious i was thinking as well when this was in the oven that you guys even for your non-keto family that you can actually serve this with some pasta. Um, I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna um, cook up some of the new pasta. That's my favorite low carb pasta. And I think I'm gonna have this way maybe with some pasta and see how it is. But it looks absolutely delicious and smells so good. Guys, I'm finally going to make my keto cinnamon buns. I haven't made this recipe, but I've always wanted to give it a try. It looks pretty easy and simple, so I thought, you know what, I will give it a try and see how it tastes. 
So this is made with the Carb Quick. If you guys haven't tried Carb Quick, you definitely should. I order mine off of Amazon. It comes in a huge, huge box. It lasts a very long time and that is going to be how we're going to be making our cinnamon buns today. So in here, I have three and a half cups of Carb Quick. And then in here, I just have a cup of water and we are going to mix those two together with a wooden spoon and make sure that it gets well blended and well incorporated. And then we are going to take it out to knead it. And this is going to be our dough. All right, I kneaded that for about four minutes, mixed it all together and kneaded it. And now I'm just going to roll it out and then we will put all of our toppings um, inside. So I just did a little bit of carb quick on the counter. So I'm just going to put some actually on my thing here. I thought parchment paper would help it not stick because it feels a little bit sticky. All right, so let's roll this out and then get our dough all ready to put the filling inside. All right, so I got that all rolled out onto like a rectangle. And now I'm gonna put butter. Um, I have my butter in here. I actually just took it out so I could soften it a little bit. So it's nice and soft. And then we are going to put that on our dough. So we're just gonna spread that all over our dough. And then the next thing we will do is the brown sugar. So I will be back. All right, I have the butter on there and then I use this Swerve. This is the brown sugar replacement, um, good for keto. So I used a half a cup of that, like the recipe says, and just put it in here. And so I'm going to put this on our cinnamon buns and then I am going to sprinkle it with some cinnamon. So let's do that. I used a little bit more of the swerve brown sugar because I just found there was a lot of like empty spots. So yeah, <clears throat> but that, that looks good now that everything's a little bit more covered. I just like mine, I've made homemade cinnamon buns before, like regular ones, and I just like it to be pretty flavorful. Um, so that's why I added more. All right, let's pat that down a bit and let's add our cinnamon. There we go. Okay, and then I like to pat mine down. I just find it rolls better that way. Um, you guys can do it however you'd like. This is just the way I do it and my way, the way that my mom has taught me. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna wash my hands and then let's roll this. It also calls for preheating your oven to 375 degrees, which I already have that on. And this is going to be the glass dish that I'm going to be putting my cinnamon rolls in as well, too. So I'm going to have that ready. And, and I'm just going to put a little of this, this uh, the leftover melted butter. I'm going to just put that on the bottom of the pan. It doesn't call for that, but I just like putting the, I, I feel it just adds more flavor. And I have it, so I might as well just use it up. All right, so there's that is done. So I just lightly buttered that pan and let's roll this up nice and tight. And then we will put it into our baking dish. So let's do that. So yeah, you're just gonna wanna roll this just like regular cinnamon buns. Make sure that it's really, really tight as you go along. Sometimes I water my hands if it if the dough gets sticky. I've done that even with like regular ones. This one doesn't seem to be doing too, too bad. And this makes nine cinnamon buns. So hopefully that's how many we will get out of it. All right, you guys, I'm just gonna roll this and then I will get back to you when I am ready to cut it.
unrolling it. And I'm just gonna take off the ends here because they always are like an odd size. I will still cook these, but I just wanna take them off because they never cook at the same um, temperature as the other ones because they are so like smaller or just a different size. So I've always done that. Okay, so we are gonna make nine. So let's see if I can kind of score these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that seems about right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that seems good. So I encourage you guys just to kind of mark it before you cut it. So that is what I did. And then I am just going to cut through these and put them in our pan. I'm excited, you guys. Look at those. They look pretty darn good. All right, so I'm just gonna cut these and put it in the pan and then I will catch up with you guys. All right, and voila, those are all done and we are going to put them in the oven. And those little two, I'm just gonna put in this little dish that I have that I got at Christmas time and I will put those in in a little bit because they, they are not gonna take that long to cook. So those are just gonna be the little two. Maybe these can be my little taste testers. They're so cute. All right, you guys, these are the cinnamon buns right out of the oven. They look delicious. So we're gonna let those sit and cool off for a little bit and let's start on our cream cheese icing. All right, let's make the cream cheese icing. So I just have my empty mixing bowl here. We are going to put a half a block of the cream cheese in there. And we are gonna put a half a cup of butter. Half a cup of butter is softened. And then we are going to put a splash of vanilla. And then we are also going to put a cup of the powdered swerve. So this is what I use. It's a powdered sugar and it's zero calories. So I have a cup here and we are just gonna throw that in as well. And that is it for our ice. We are gonna put that in our mixer and we are gonna mix it up until it's all smooth. All right, you guys, so I messed up on my ingredients. It was a quarter of a cup of butter. I did use a half a cup, so I ended up actually doubling all of my other ones. So I used a full bar of cream cheese, two cups of the powdered sugar swerve, and then of course I already had the half a cup. So I have a lot of cream cheese icing, which is okay. I will probably make something else that requires this icing, maybe my pumpkin bars, cause those are really, really good and it uses this icing as well. But anyways, <laughs> let's get to icing our um, cinnamon buns here, you guys. They absolutely look delicious. And these are our little testers. So let's ice in those. Those are fairly cool, which is awesome. And let's ice in these. So I like to do for my icing, I like to just like plop it on um, and then I mix, I don't like to kind of cover the whole entire thing and mix just because I don't want to like break the cinnamon buns or whatever I am baking. Um, I've always just done that. Just a little tip for you guys, especially on cakes as well too. I always do this on cakes because I always find that I'm taking like, if I put a whole blob in the middle and then mix it all around, then I end up, um, you know, messing up the whole cake and it's just not good. So I've always kind of done this and it's just a little bit easier to, to spread. All right, let's spread those. You can also put them, like probably put your icing in a uh, piping, like even a, a baggie and do it that way too. Uh, I don't know, I'm not that fancy. <laughs> but you guys, if you are feeling fancy, you, you definitely can do that but I'm just going to spread these and ice in them the good old fashioned way, I guess you would say. These absolutely smell delicious though, you guys. I already tasted the icing because of course I wanted to make sure it was good and it is delicious. So I cannot wait to try these. I think what I'm gonna do, cause these made like nine and I don't know if my family, Jimmy doesn't even, anything that even says keto, he just doesn't try because he thinks it's not gonna have flavor or taste good at all. He is awful for that, unfortunately. He's supportive, of course, of me, but 
he just never wants to try anything keto. I wish my younger daughter Zoe was still here because she was like my little taste tester and she liked a lot of the things that I did. And I sure miss her being at home. It's it is kind of different, but you know what? When I was that age, I kind of wanted to experience living on my own as well too. So I, I get it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a couple of these to my friend in town, Tina. She actually does keto as well, and she's lost a ton of weight. Her and her husband both are on keto. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them a couple and see if they like it because they always appreciate my little baking. All right, and then these are our little tasters, you guys. So these are always the ends like I shown you. Um, I always cut them off even when I'm making like the regular cinnamon buns. Um, but we are gonna ice in these and this is the one we are going to taste. I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys. I, I'm sorry I can't remember the net carbs on these. Um, but make sure that you look down to the recipe below. Um, I, it looks like it's gonna be a good one. It looks like it's gonna be a good recipe. So let's give these a little taste. All right, let's taste one of these little, little mini ones that I have, all right? They're still a little bit warm. Oh my God. How do all things, these things, taste like the real thing? <laughs> I don't know if my taste buds have taste buds have changed, but this is really really good. Oh my god! Like, doesn't that look like a real cinnamon bun? And it even tastes like it. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know how they do that. Really really good. Almost too freaking good. Two. For my supper, I ended up mixing that and taking that, um, cooking up a little bit of the new pasta, sorry. Um, and I'm going to have that with the chicken dish that I made. So that's what I'm taking for supper since I do work tonight. And I am also, I am also taking the cinnamon bun. They were so, so good. So I'm taking that. And I also will be taking a Diet Coke. And that will be my supper for tonight, you guys. Like I said, I work 2 till 8.30. So... I will catch up with you probably when I get home from work, I would say. I will try to take a short clip when I do eat, but I don't always remember. But I will see you guys at the end of the night. All right, you guys, it is my supper break. So I'm having the new pasta noodles with the chicken casserole that I made. And I'm having it with a uh, Diet Pepsi. And this is really good. I'm glad I mixed it with the pasta. It tastes a little bit more filling than just having the chicken casserole by itself. But um, you guys can mix it with whatever. If you wanted to do it with the cauliflower rice as well, I think it would really go well. Very, very easy recipe. Highly recommend you guys. Your family will even like this recipe too. All right, you guys, I am just gonna finish my supper here on my break and I will see you guys once I get home tonight after work. Hey guys, I just got home. It's a little bit after nine o'clock and I wanted to show you what I bought from my um, keto bakery guy that I know that does keto baking. He is making donuts now. So I picked up a dozen of the donuts. I did assorted because I wanted to try them all. And so these are all of them. These ones are the cinnamon. I had a bite out of that one. And then I had the chocolate, uh, double chocolate. And it was really, really good. So he charges $10 for a dozen donuts. Um, I think he gave me a couple extra just because we're really good friends actually. Um, so anyways, I love these and I'm so happy that he started making them but I just wanted to show you guys how amazing they look. And I must say though, my cinnamon roll that I had at supper time was absolutely amazing. I packaged up actually um, two to take to my friend Tina. I'll probably send them actually um, with my husband. He is getting his hair cut tomorrow and that is our good friend that cuts hair. So I hope she likes those. And that is it for the night, you guys. The end of my full day of eating. I will put on the screen my total calories and total net carbs. My day today was spot on. I feel really, really good with all the foods that I ate. And it was fairly lower in net carbs too, which I am pretty proud of as well too.
that is it for the night you guys i hope you enjoyed this full day of eating with me and make sure that you leave me a comment or else give me a like on this video to let me know that you're liking these kind of videos and then i can continue to make them because honestly if i don't know you guys um if i don't know if you're enjoying them then i don't know to keep on making them right so make sure that you let me know down in the comments and also like this video if you're not already make sure that you're subscribed and hit that red subscribe button and give this video a like, like I said. Make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And thanks for watching, you guys.